Nehemiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 39. The title of this message is A Sealed Faith. A Sealed Faith. Something very special happened to you on the day you were born. It happened on the day you were born and you didn't even realize it. But something very special happened to you. You see, you have something that was something very valuable was given to you. Something that you probably, even in your adult years, that you haven't and probably maybe a couple of times. But it's precious. It's valuable. It's so precious that when you left your home as an adult, your parents made sure that it was in your possession. My friends, this is called a birth certificate. That's right, a birth certificate. It's a very special document. It's a very special document. You see, your birth certificate, my friends, is no ordinary document. It's no ordinary document. You see, according to USA.gov, it's probably the single most important document Amen. That's one thing our government gets right, praise the Lord. The single most important document. Why? Because it enables you to have the right to an official identity, nationality, and a legal recognized name. That's your birth certificate. And my friends, and on that birth certificate is your date of birth is listed there. Your sex and gender is listed there. Praise the Lord. Let me just stick a pen in it right here. You see, that's why transgender is not something of God, my friends. It's not something of God. Amen. We need to make sure that we recognize who we are based upon how God made us. And now why would any person would want to fight and argue with God on how he made them? Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm thankful that God made me a man. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I am a man. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm proud and I'm happy that he made me that way. And I don't want to change it. Amen. Praise God. You ought to be happy the way God made you. Amen. He didn't make a mistake, my friends. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He didn't make a mistake. And so on that birth certificate is your sex, your gender, but also your place of birth. Yeah, it's there. It's there. The names of your parents, praise God, is there. The names of both parents are listed on your birth certificate. But not only that, but the, the official city, county, and state, it's all there. It's all there. You see, it means, my friends, and this is why your birth certificate is so important, it means that you have all rights, liberties, and protection in the country where you were born. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm thankful, my friends, for this birth certificate because it gives proof of legitimacy. Praise God. It gives proof of legitimacy. And on this birth certificate is a special mark. It's a special mark. There's something very special on this birth certificate, my friends. It's called a seal. In order for it to be really legit, Donald, they, they had to stamp it with a seal. And, and, and the 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 certified, your certified birth certificate has a raised seal on it. And it's multicolored. Praise God. It, it's multicolored and it's embossed with the city, county, and state on your birth certificate. 
Amen. Now let me see if I can make this plain, praise God. We're talking about a sealed faith. Let me see if I can make this plain. You see, my friends, your, your certified birth certificate, praise God, must always have a raised seal. Uh, it must also have the signature of the register and the date of issue. Now, anyone, here it is, here it is, if I can make this plain, anyone who officially belongs to the body of Christ, Hallelujah. You are a legal citizen of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. You see, my friends, on the very moment when you were saved, you were issued a certified, hallelujah, new birth certificate. That's right. You, you are officially identified as a son and daughter of God. The place of where you were born again, hallelujah, is in heaven. Praise God. Amen. Your father's name is on there. God the father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. Your father's name is on there. Praise God. There is an official colored seal, and it's in red. Praise God. The seal was stamped with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Making you valid, making you certified, making you a citizen of heaven. And then there's an official signature. Hallelujah. Signed by Jesus Christ himself, the son of God, the son of the living God. I have stamped my approval on this child because they belong to me. They gave their faith to me. And now, hallelujah, they are official and they have every right to serve me. They have every right to praise me. They have every liberty and blessing that heaven can give. Hallelujah. I wish I had a praying church here. You are a legal citizen of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Your faith has been sealed. Your faith has been sealed, my friends. And see, and this is what the Israelites began to realize. They began to realize that now we have come back into our own country. We now have to register and recognize ourselves as the people of God. Amen. And so they brought this letter out. And they began to write their names on this letter and they the Bible says, and they're sealed. They sealed the documents. You see this word sealed here, it means of covenant attested by seal. In other words, it was a sealed promise. They sealed their commitment to God. Praise God. You see the Israelites, what they did, my friends, really, they, they, they reclaimed their citizenship and they renewed their covenant with God. That's what they did. That's what they did. They, 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 they reclaimed their citizenship and says, now we are the people of Israel and now we want to renew our covenant with God. And so they signed their name on this covenant and they sealed it. Praise God. And my friends, if you and I, as the kingdom people of heaven. We too, praise God, we, we too must seal our covenant and our commitment to God. And so sign and seal your commitment to God. And because they did this, they said that we're going to make our commitment to God. We're going to renew it. And so they said that how can we do this? How must we do this? And I think, my friends, that you and I, I think we can learn as children of God in the world, praise the Lord, we can learn how to, what, seal and renew our commitment to God. We too can do that. And so let me ask you, how committed are you as a citizen of God's kingdom? Well, I think we can learn some ways we can learn some principles, some valuable principles in this text that will help us to sign and seal our commitment to God. And I think here's the first thing this is what they did, my friends, is that, that we need to, number one, seal our faith. Seal our faith. 
You see, they did it right here. They said that uh, if you look back at verse uh, number, chapter 9, verse 38, and it says, because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. Our leaders, our Levites, and our priests seal it. They seal, in essence, they were saying that, okay, God, we're, we've come back into our land. We have worshiped you on these holy days. And now it's time for us to begin to live as the people of God. And so they begin to put their trust in Almighty God and now going back to their daily businesses of their lives. And so they said that our faith, God, you're going to be first. You're going to be first, and we're going to start with you. We're going to start with you. Seal your faith. They sealed their commitment to God. And so in other words, when we think about Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And this is what they were doing. They were prioritizing God. They were prioritizing their, their commitment to God. My friends, and you and I, we need to make sure that we've sealed our faith, that we've sealed it in such a way that regardless of what happens in this world, what happens in this life, our faith is going to be first. Our faith will be priority. I remember, Roy, when I first got saved, man, I realized, I said, that I really, really wanted to please God. And so I said, God, I said that I, I'm going to do my best to make sure that my foundation is on my faith and that my focus will be on my family. Because I had lived a life to where I neglected my wife, neglected my child at the time, only had one but I said, Lord, I am going to make sure now that you have saved me, I'm going to make sure that you're number one, that my foundation is on my faith and my focus is on my family. And if there's anything in this life that does not have to do with any of those, then I'll have nothing to do with it. I'll have nothing to do with it. And I remember my friend, he got married and, uh, and, uh, and, and so he, um, he was going to have his what they call bachelor party. Y'all know what those are, praise the Lord. Amen. You, you know what a bachelor party is. So he's going to have his bachelor party. And, uh, and he said, no, but he said, man, I'm going to have my bachelor party on such and such date, and we're going to be down here at the Gentleman's Club, and we're going to be, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I said, you going you gonna to have it where? He said, down here at the Gentleman's Club. And I was like, uh, can, can my son come? He said, your son, my son was about, Four years old. He said, I, I said, can my son come? He said, man, no, you know, he, he can't come. To I said, well, man, I can't come either. I can't come either. My focus is going to be on my family. My foundation is going to be on my faith. And if there was anything in the world that could that was not involved, those two, guess what? I wasn't involved. Make a commitment. Seal your faith regardless of what happens in this world. Seal your faith and say, God, this is where I'm going to stand. This is where I'm going to reside. It's going to be on my faith in you. And this is what the Israelites were doing. They sealed their faith. They made a commitment and a covenant to God. But then not only that, but then... Uh, if we are going to be citizens in this world and we're going to seal, sign and seal our commitment to God, we have to separate from a sinful society. Separate from a sinful society. Look at now, we already read the priests, the Levites, and the leaders. We already read those. Thank God I didn't bite my tongue. Hallelujah. So now look with me at verse number 28. Here the people said that they were going to begin to what? Separate themselves from the peoples of the lands. Separate themselves from the peoples of the land. Why did they do that? Because the people of the land were not going to be serving their God. They were pagan, and they were worshiping pagan gods. And so they said that we have to separate ourselves from the peoples of the land. 
they separate themselves and notice what it says that not only did they separate themselves from the people of the land but then also you look down at verse number 30 it says also that we will not give our daughters to their men and we will not give our sons to their women so in other words they said that we won't allow our children to marry their children why because it will cause them to leave their God and to go after and worship pagan gods. And so the Bible speaks of uh, not being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Not be, being unequally yoked with unbelievers. In other words, the light has no fellowship with darkness. So young ladies, young men who are looking for a spouse, make sure that you marry a believer. Make sure that they know who Christ is. Because if not, you'll end up sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> my, my, my. you end up sleeping with the enemy and then you, you, you might try to justify and say, well, you know what? But we're so compatible. Oh, he loves me so much. Oh, and I love him too. But if he's not saved, honey baby child, guess what? He ain't going to love you the way he's supposed to love you. Because he got to love God first. And so the people said that we will not give our children to their children in marriage. We won't do that. And you know who made a grave mistake? And you wouldn't think that he would do this. But the wisest man that the Bible says in the Bible, that the wisest man that ever lived was King Solomon. The Bible gives him that title. But guess what he did? He went out and married other women who were not, who were unequally yoked, who worshiped pagan gods and false idols. They worshiped, and guess what they did? They ended up pulling Solomon away when God told him not to do that. Now, you would think the wisest man wouldn't do that. But what does it show? It shows that we sometimes would allow our own flesh and our own desires to overtake the will of God overtake the will of God but the Israelite says that listen we are not going to do that we're going to separate from a sinful society and see and this is why God calls us Christians he called us out of the world amen and into his church into his body and so we should not live like the world lives amen we should not live like the world lives but we should be separate Separate, separation, write this down, Sep write this down. Separation is simply a total devotion to God no matter what the cost. Separation is a simple total devotion to God no matter what the cost. Separate yourselves from the world and to God. But if we're going to sign and seal our commitment to God, not only, my friends, do we realize this separation that was going on, but I think when we look around at verse 31, I think we have to also set aside the Sabbath. We have to set aside the Sabbath. And you look there at verse 31, it says, And the people of the land brought wares and grain and to sell on the Sabbath, but we will not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Because the Bible instructed the Israelites to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now, the Sabbath and keeping the Sabbath was a, was a Jewish tradition. It was a Jewish tradition. So where do we as Christians stand in that? Well, when you begin to see in the New Testament, when Jesus died and he rose again on the third day, he rose again on the first day of the week, the Bible says, when the, the disciples and, and Mary came to the tomb, came on the first day of the week and they found the tomb and the, the, uh, uh, the Jesus uh, was alive and well and the tomb was empty on the first day of the week. And so then you'll begin to see that the early church, uh, that they begin also recognizing the first day of the week rather than the Jewish Sabbath. The Jewish Sabbath was on a Saturday. And so, so from, five, from Friday, 6 p.m. on Friday evening until 6 p.m. on Saturday evening was the, considered the Sabbath. 
But now, the early church and us as Christians, we begin to recognize the Christian Sabbath as a Sunday, the first day of the week. And this is now our Christian Sabbath. And this is what we recognize. And so we too need to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. <laughs> Praise God. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. What does that mean for us? That means that we come to worship God. That means that we come and we fellowship with the believers. We come and we come together and pray together, encourage one another. This is what we do on Sundays to encourage each other, to remember to keep it holy because this is God's day. This is the Lord's day. Revelation, you'll read that when John of the Revelator was in uh, was on the Isle of Patmos and he says that, that when, on the Lord's day, he says, on the Lord's day that the Lord came to me. What he meant was Sunday. The Lord's day is Sunday. And so now we get an opportunity, my friends, to set aside the Sabbath, to come together, come out of our own homes, worship God together, pray to God together, amen, fellowship with God together, and we do these things on the first day of the week. Sign and seal your commitment to God. And then also, my friends, if we are going to do that, then there's one last thing that you and I, uh, that we must do. Well, there's actually two. One is that we should also submit to God's word. Notice verse 29, it says here, these all joined with their brethren, their nobles, entered into a curse and an oath to walk in God's law. Now, 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 this is something that they did. And I got to looking in the scriptures, Jordan, and I was like, God, is there anywhere in the Bible where you want us to enter into a curse and make a promise to walk into your law? And I didn't find it. So I would say be very careful in making promises to God. Be very careful and making promises to God, but this is what they did. See, they said that we're going to do this, enter into a curse. In other words, if we don't do it, then God, you do something to us. And, and an oath, we're going to make a promise to do what? To walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and to do all the commandments of the Lord our God and his ordinance and his statutes so for us as believers my friends we should submit to the word of God not make a promise to do it but to do it because we love him to do it because we are devoted to him because Jesus says if you love me keep my commands right and the Bible also teaches us that God's word, they're not burdensome. They're not too heavy because he gives us the power to be able to obey him. And so we obey him because we love him. We want to live like him because we love him. <laughs> Praise God. We want to do what he said do because he did something for us that we can't do for ourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. He died. Praise God. And we couldn't die for ourselves. And he now has offered us salvation. And because he has done that, then we ought to want to submit to his word and to do it to the best of our ability only because we love him. Amen. Praise God. And so submit to the word of God. They made this solemn oath to say, God, we are going to obey your word. We're going to obey your word. Sign and seal your commitment to God. And then lastly, we see that the people decided that if we are going to be committed in this land in which we live, now that God has blessed us to be able to build this temple, that we are going to support it. So now lastly, my friends, support the house of God and his work. Support the house of God and his work. They sacrifice for 
for the work of God and the sanctuary. The work of God and the sanctuary. You notice they gave tithes, they gave offerings, praise God. And they said, God, we're going to make sure that your house has everything that it needs. We're going to give from the first fruits of our grain. We're going to give from the first fruits of our fruit. We're going to give the first fruits of all God that we have to give it unto you. Why? God, because you are with us. You helped us to build this temple. You protected us against our enemies. And God, and because of that, we want to show our love and our gratitude for you, God. And we're going to give back to you because you deserve it all. You deserve it all. A tithe is a tenth. It is a tenth. So they gave a tenth of what they owned. They gave it to God's house and they also gave a tenth to the Levites. So when they gave it to God, they gave it to the Levites because the Levites, the priests, didn't have to tithe according to the Mosaic law. They were serving God and so because they served God, uh, doing the work of God, then the people gave to the Levites, gave to the priests, and they lived off of the tithe. So the priests and their families lived off of the tent and the offerings. And we just read Malachi earlier. Will a man rob God? God says, yeah, you have robbed me, what, in tithes and offerings. You have robbed me in tithes and offerings. But he says here, prove me now. And see, won't I open your windows and pour you out a blessing that your room will not be able to receive. And then we notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 through 3, here that we are instructed. It says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, somebody say the first day of the week. Let each one of you lay aside, store it up, as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. And when I come, whomever you approve by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. And so Paul here says that when you come on the first day of the week, bring your tithe, bring your collection, bring what the Lord, how the Lord has prospered you, you bring it into the storehouse. You bring it to the church. And the Bible says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. It also teaches us that God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. I remember Erica, my wife and I, we went to Africa. Went to Africa and we were in, in Ghana, Ghana, West Africa. And we went there uh, and, and, uh, and we began to, uh, uh, to help out uh, the Sukunami village help build a church and a school for them and, and to provide uh, running water for them. And uh, we were coming down to the close of that mission. And then, so we were over there and we worshiped at a church. And I, I love the way they did their offering. And I think we might need to adopt that, praise God. So when the offering time came, guess what? The music started playing. Come on, give me some drum beat. Give me some drum beat. The music started, give me, give me some music. Give me some music. Give me some music. Drum beat. So the music, offering time came. And, and, and man, they, they got there, they, they, they stood up, praise God, and, uh, and man, they just started dancing. They started dancing. Uh, they started dancing. Had their money in their hand, and man, and they went all the way up. To the, they went row by row, and everybody just went up, went right up to the offer plate, put their money in the plate, and man, they just, they danced all the way back to their seat. A cheerful giver, a cheerful giver. They gave cheerfully, my friends. And I'm telling you, listen, it was a great and mighty time. The giving was just as high praise as the worship was. Praise God. Just as the preaching was, they made it a part of their service and they danced and danced and danced. Even the little children, praise God, just was dancing. Went up to the offering, put in money, and danced all the way back to their seat, praise the Lord. Listen, my friends, God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. And so we need to support 
the house of God and his work by how God has blessed us. And if you notice, they said that they gave to the Levites. We need to get this in our spirit that, that the men of God and the pastors and preachers and their families are supported by the church. They're supported by the church. And this is something that you ought to gladfully and joyfully be able to do for your pastor and his family because the Levites were blessed by the people because they did the service of God. They did the work of God. And if you notice, look what they said in the end. They said, we will not neglect the house of God. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. And they concluded by saying, we will not neglect the house of our God. Is that your commitment? Do you have a signed and sealed commitment to God? Your faith is in him, in him alone. That you'll trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, knowing he will direct your path. Do you have that seal kind of faith and trust in God? Have you had that commitment of saying that I'm going to separate myself from the worldliness that's going on in our land? Do you have that commitment? Do you have that commitment to say, God, your word is above everything in my life? Because you said man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by your word. Do you have that kind of commitment? Have you decided in your life that you're not going to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some are on the first day of the week? You have that commitment. Do you have that commitment to say, I'm going to support the Lord and his work. I'm going to support the man of God. I'm going to support God and his work. Come what may. Do you have that kind of commitment? Listen, because God made that commitment to you. You have a sealed faith, my friends. Not a sealed faith because of what you do. Oh, no, but let me just reverse this. You have a sealed faith, God, because of what God has done. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. First Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed hallelujah with the Holy Spirit of promise that's right God sealed your faith not only do you have the seal of faith uh, the seal by the Holy Spirit oh but you have a seal uh, your name hallelujah is sealed in the Lamb's book of life Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 5 says that then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within it and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, uh, who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it and I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to loose it of thereof and one of the elders said to me weep no more behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has conquered so that he hallelujah can open the scroll and break its seven seals hallelujah yes there's a seal of the Holy Spirit yes there's the seven seals that to the book of life where your name is written and only the Lamb of God hallelujah will be able to break that seal oh but there's one other seal that was almost unbreakable but somebody came and broke that seal it was a seal that they put on the tomb praise God where they laid the body of Jesus that's right they
they laid him in the grave and then they said put a seal on it so nobody can come and steal his body but hallelujah on that third day morning hallelujah on the first day of the week the disciples came to the tomb and they found the seal the stone rolled away hallelujah and the angel said why you look among the living uh, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen just like he said he was. Hallelujah, my friends. Listen, your faith is sealed not in what you've done, but it's all in what Jesus did. Mary's baby. He died on the cross. He rose again on the third day. Your faith is sealed. Why? Because Jesus shed his blood. Hallelujah. Your faith is sealed. Why? Because he rose. Hallelujah. Sat down at the right hand of the Father now make an intercession for you and me. Your faith is sealed. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Your faith is sealed. Why? Because he is the first and the last. He is the bright and morning star. Your faith is sealed because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Come on, give him glory in the house today. God, we thank you. We bless your name today. God, we thank you for this sealed faith that we have. Yes, we can commit ourselves to you. We can separate from a sinful world. We can submit to your word. We can keep the Sabbath holy. We can support your house. But God, it's all in vain if we have not sealed our faith in you. God, without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. And so our faith is sealed because of what Jesus did for us. And God, we thank you. And so God, is our prayer now. Lord, that we commit ourselves unto you. That we first give our life to you. Because of what you've done for us. And that and now that we have, and when we have done that, we can begin to live our life. as a citizen of heaven with this heavenly birth certificate that we have that's got your name on it. And we thank you. So God, we love you because you first loved us. And we honor you. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you stand on your feet?